Christmas Eve as of 30 minutes ago. And we're out here machining. Oh yeah. guys so we got some parts that we need to make for this go-kart um, so I'm gonna head over to the machine shop and make some pieces um, these pieces involve a steering wheel hub that holds a steering wheel but also a clutch lever to activate the clutch like a butterfly clutch um, we also have to make parts for the steering on the bottom of the steering column and for the spindles so we can connect it all up and when you turn the wheel it actually turns the uh, spindles with the wheels on them so let's head over to the machine shop, find some scrap metal, and machine those things up. So Reed got this half inch aluminum sh uh, sheet, and what we're gonna do with that is make a clutch lever. And we're also going to machine a hub for the steering wheel that will connect to the steering column, but also have a mount for the clutch lever. And we're doing a butterfly clutch lever design, just a hand clutch. Um, similar to just a normal standard shifter car. So here is the finished steering hub design right here. So it's been through many modifications, uh, many designs and solid works, um, but finally got it done. Beautiful clutch lever here that was water jet cut by Reed. Here's the hub, um, all designed in solid works. It's a hexagonal hub. Um, Two parts connected to this part which connects to the steering wheel itself um, and this this is all one piece and then second piece which this is actually two pieces this piece has a little slot in it so the cables can slide in and it seats right there over this um, very well designed fits perfectly and the cable won't fall out and then this also connects to the steering hub and it allows for adjustment um, so as the clutch wears and stuff, it can be easily adjusted right on here, besides also on the engine. So, lots of room for adjustments. Um, great design here, it's gonna look clean. Um, I love the clutch lever. So that is all completed. All we need to do is put some holes in the steering rod for those two set screws for these two pieces. And then it's good to go. 
All right, so here I have the some three pieces, um, some scrap steel that I cut. It's got a little bit of surface rust, but that'll clean off. Um, two of these will connect to the spindle right here. Um, it'll go like that with a hole in it, and that's what's going to turn it. Um, this other piece will connect to the steering column and have two holes in it that connect so when it turns, it um, pushes on these, it turns the spindles, which turns the wheels. Alright, so I just finished these little spindle arms. Both of them, I clamped them together when I shaped them so they have the same shape. Um, clean them up just a little bit, but not fully yet. Um, they're going to go on the spindles like that. Um, I still need to grind away some um, so they fit right and they'll get it at the right angle for Ackerman, but I'm going to do that in the garage when they're on the go-kart. Um, I've also drilled this guy, um, which goes on the end of the steering like that. Um, so I'm just going to shape this up a little bit better so it's not square. Probably make it a little bit more triangular, so hit that on the mill, clean it up on the grinder, clean up some of the rust, and then we'll be good to go. Alright, so right now I'm just setting up the spindles, um, the spindle arms. So I tied a little piece of paracord to the center of the rear axle, popped it up to the center of the joint where it's, um, that it turns around, and then line up you go from the top and um, when this wheel is centered, um, pointing straight ahead, the hole, you can see the, the little piece of paracord overlaps the hole. I uh, just tacked, just checked this one and tacked it in place so I can take it off and fully weld the arm on and then we'll do the same thing to the other side and that's called Ackerman angle. Um, so that's what we're doing now. All the spindles and spindle arms are mounted up. Um, so what I gotta do now is the tie rods. Connecting from there to there. And tie rods have to be adjustable. So what I'm gonna do. I have these aluminum pieces that I'm gonna clean up and then spin these on the lathe and put a hole in either side. And then tap them and put in these uh, male heim joints uh, with a jam nut. So, I'll thread into the end, jam it in, then I'll be, be able to adjust my steering um, so it's perfectly straight and aligned. So I got the rolling chassis now completed, pretty exciting. Just hooked up the steering. These are the tie rods, they're just tapped with the heim joints. So now when we turn the wheel, everything turns. We got the hub all mounted up. Hub all mounted up with the clutch lever. Um, and the cable attached. Everything is seated awesome. We got the uh, shaft collars on it so it's not going anywhere. Everything's all tight. Steering is working great. It's nice and smooth. So now we're moving on to the back. This is what we're doing now. This is the brake caliper from the Kawasaki Ninja. And what we're doing with this, um, as you saw, I made that plate with the holes in it. And originally I was going to have it over here and bend it and weld it on top of these two. And then I was like, you know what? That's kind of ugly. So what I'm going to do is just take the plate, I'm going to cut it off there. Cut the plate off right here. Um, grind it off so it's smooth. And then weld it to the bottom here. Also to this bearing block. Um, the inside of this bearing block. And then I took this other tube. Just notched the end of it. And that piece is just going to go like that. I'm going to cut it off under that. And then that's going to be another support and welded onto the bottom there. So that's gonna be welded in three different spots and um, that, that'll hold it very securely. So let's get these pieces cut and welded on and see how they fit.
I'm gonna be making seat posts by taking these three quarter inch tubes and squishing the end of them like that. And then that's where I'm gonna drill a 5 16 hole. And that's what's gonna bolt to the seats. And then this side, I'll be able to notch and then weld onto the frame. All right guys, so I'm back working on this shifter cart. Uh, I did some things off camera, so I'm just gonna update you. Um, first of all, I ran out of welding gas, so I had to pick up some more. Um, but I ran out of welding gas when I was tacking these seat posts down. So I have four seat posts on the sides. They're just tacked in um, real quick. And right now the engine is just sitting on welding magnets, but I did uh, machine the holes in this rear plate. So this, I'm gonna bolt the inch into this, lay it on there, and then I can get the uh, chain mocked up, and then get this thing tack welded on. So I'm working on this go-kart, and I have the seat uh, mounts all welded up, and then I just wanted to mock up the engine with the chain, but I realized I only have number 41 chain, not 40 chain, and this is running off of 40 chain. So I have to order that. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to mount the engine today, but I'm just gonna try to figure out what else I can do before I mount the engine. Maybe I'll work on the engine wiring and get it to fire up and stuff like that and um, mock up the shifting, shifting mechanism. I think I'll do that kind of stuff in the pedals. And then I'll mount the engine um, when the chain comes next week. And we'll try to get this thing done before I go back to school. All right guys, so I got the engine just clamped down with the engine plate to the table. And I have the gas tank with a little bit of fuel in it, um, suspended on these jack stands with a piece of wood. It's, a little, not, it's kind of sketchy, but we just want to see if it starts. I have it all wired up. I checked the wiring, spark plug out, spark plug on the exhaust, and it was sparking. So we have spark, we have fuel. Um, my history with engines, it's not great, so we're gonna see if this thing starts. Didn't see that. All right, so we're leaking oil out of this guy. Um, I'm gonna take a little closer look at that. So I'm gonna go take a look at some things, but at least we know this thing starts. That's amazing. I mean, it should because it's new, but <laughs> that's better than what I have with my uh, last engine. So I'm pretty happy about that. So I'm gonna get a switch in between those two um, pieces for the kill. Check out this oil thing. So I finished this pedal um, assembly here. Uh, it was just a block and then the cable goes through there and the hole's only big enough for the cable. 
Um, have a little spring hook in on the side of this block also. Um, boom, that one just opens up the carburetor for throttle. This one um, is the brake. The brake takes a little bit more force on the cable, so I did brace the, um, this block right here, the cable block, um, with a piece, and then I, I notched it out there and welded it on right behind the tube, so that's a lot stronger for the brake. So as you can see here, the fuel tank, I just put a bolt through this top um, motor mount, and I twisted these guys out of the fuel tank, nice and hard there. I was actually going to redesign this in the future, but we'll see how this holds. It seems to be holding pretty well, and it may not need to be redesigned. redesigned. In addition to mounting this, I made some brackets down here um, to reinforce connecting to the bottom motor mount, um, connecting to the plate where there's bolts threading into it, um, just like that. So that's just gonna make it um, a little bit stronger, and it's not gonna torque um, anything. It's going to keep the motor nice and nice in place right there. As you can see, I also mounted the exhaust. That's just going to be for um, the testing purposes, no muffler or anything like that. And we got the chain on, like just like that. Um, it's a little looser than I would have liked, but um, let's hope it doesn't stretch out. Right now, it's perfect tightness for um, uh, just a, a chain, but hopefully it doesn't stretch too much. But we'll see. Okay, moving over to the shift linkage. So you saw I made this before. Um, this is the, it's the same kind of thing that I used for the um, uh, tie rods, I guess, like control rods for the steering. It's just an aluminum rod, tap the ends, but in hind joints. Um, originally I had it, I had to redesign this a couple times because originally I had it connected way down here. And the problem with that was um, it didn't have enough to actually like engage the uh, the the gears. But now with this this new design, it's up here. Um, this is bent up, so now you can see clicks in um, forward and backwards really really easily. So it's awesome. Um, can't wait to get uh, trying this thing. So this is pretty much it for part three, um, mounting out all the components. I'll see you guys in part four next week. Um, we're gonna put the seat on, and then we're gonna take this thing for its very first test drive. So I'll see you guys in part four.